What's up everybody? In this video I give you guys an update on what's been going on with the Supra for the last year and we check out our new ride. Here we go. So 2017 wasn't really a crazy year as far as modifications go for the Supra. We did a few things which I'll show you guys a little bit later in the video, uh, but really it was a big year as far as enjoying the car. Uh, like I've said in previous videos, the Supra is my daily driver, but I actually kind of stepped out uh, and, and took a little bit of a risk last year. And uh, for 2017, I participated in the entire uh, season for RCCA, which is the local kind of autocross event. And uh, the Super did great, you know, as a small track, definitely not ideal for a larger, more powerful car such as the Supra. But I still had a really great time learning car control. And if you want to check more of that out, check out the videos in the channel because there's plenty of RCCA content there. Another really cool thing that I did is I uh, found out about this guy, goes by the name of uh, 0260 design lab uh, you can check them out on Instagram and Facebook and uh, he does these really really cool renderings and he actually did one of the Supra and as you can see he did a shirt and the Supra is right here so hopefully guys you can see that uh, so that was really cool be sure to check them out on Instagram or Facebook now let's get into the few modifications so jumping right off the bat one of the things you guys may notice is there's the license plate change so in the previous video what you may have noticed is that the license plates a little bit different so originally this had Y which is the military designator uh, for vehicles registered in Japan if you're here under the American military then you'll have a Y plated vehicle and then it was 9242 which was just the generic number that was assigned to the car and so I had the opportunity to uh, go ahead and get some custom plates and you can only change the numbers around so I decided to do 1993 to commemorate not only the manufacturer year of the car but also my birthday and then up here we see another modification that I did recently uh, deleted the uh, windshield wiper motor on the rear and uh, got this really cool plug from this guy he goes by Aruba Dave on uh, Facebook and is really active in both the Supra and the Z32 300 ZX community so super super happy with that and moving around, we'll move into kind of the next update on the Supra, and it's the wheels and tires. And uh, I'm sure you guys are kind of like, what is he talking about? It's the same Workmeisters that were on the car, but I took the opportunity a couple months ago to go ahead and get them refinished. Uh, one of my local car enthusiast buddies did an awesome job of uh, polishing up the lips and respraying the faces over. Uh, they were looking pretty dingy and I think he, he did a great job. They're not perfect, you know, perfection was never the expectation with this. This was just a simple refurb job. Uh, there's still, you know, curb rash in some areas and everything, but that wasn't the focus. The focus wasn't perfection, it was just to clean them up a little bit. And I'm super happy with how they turned out. And uh, while they were off the car, I took the opportunity to go ahead and uh, wrap the wheels in fresh rubber. So it's got a 245 4018 Hankook Ventus V12 Evo 2s. Uh, being a primarily daily driver with some spirited driving on the weekends, I'm really, really happy with how this particular tire setup uh, has worked out. And I love the way they look on the 18 by 9 inch Workmeisters. And then moving around to the front, we're going to kind of touch on the last upgrade to the car. It's one that I'm really, really excited about because it was a killer deal. So in the last video, I talked to you guys about the S2 uh, taillight upgrade that I had done. I had gotten a killer deal on that, and I came across another amazing deal. So the headlights that are currently on the car are the S2 headlights. Again, that's 97 and up. Typically, these are never available in the used market. You only find them new, and they're about $1,000 new. But I was able to pick these up locally. A uh, local car enthusiast, super owner, was uh, selling his car and he had them on his car. And uh, as you can see, you know, they're definitely used. They're not in perfect condition. They were a lot rougher when I got them. We've done a little bit of refurbishing work. Shout out to uh, Burdell's Garage Detailing Service for, for getting them looking a lot better than they were. But I'm really, really happy with the, th with the way that they turned out. And I think the facelift uh, 
headlights and taillights together definitely make this thing even cleaner. So really happy with the car and, and the way it is now. Um, it's just got a few more months here in Okinawa and then the car will actually be on a boat to the United States because uh, both the car and I are returning to the great state of Texas. And so in just a few short months, like I said, this car is going to be imported and it will be federally legal because it will be exactly 25 years old. I'll be covering more of that in a future video, so be sure to stay tuned. So that pretty much wraps it up for the Supra. Now we'll get into the next part of the video, which is one that I'm really, really excited about, but it's actually kind of a bittersweet moment, and I'll explain that more towards the end of the video. But here is our new ride. So this is our 1996 Toyota Hilux Surf. Uh, this is the equivalent to a third generation 4Runner in the States. And the reason that we got this vehicle is because, for those of you that don't know, my wife and I just had our first child, uh, our baby boy. And when we found out we were pregnant, my wife wanted something that was a little bit sturdier, a little bit safer and more robust than the smaller Okinawa car that she was driving. So we came across this locally and uh, immediately she was stoked because she knew it would be safe and she knows Toyota reliability. And then obviously I was stoked because, I mean, it matches the Supra almost perfectly, even down to the wheels with the polished lips and silver faces. And I just totally geek over that sort of stuff. So really, really happy with the opportunity to get this. Uh, like I said, we've had it for the last couple of months and it's been an incredible daily driver, no issues whatsoever. Uh, aside from there was a little bit of shuttering in the front brakes, but that's pretty common on this chassis and a simple front brake job took care of that. So really, really happy with it. As you can see, there's small differences from what's available in the U.S. market. So the factory tire carrier uh, is an option that is not available in the States. Uh, and then you see this rear contraption. We'll talk about that in just a second when I show you guys the interior. And then here you've got it, the uh, fender mounted mirror to assist with parking because obviously this is a much larger vehicle than what most people are used to. It is automatic transmission and uh, that automatic transmission is mated to a 5VZ V6. It's a 3.4 liter V6 gasoline engine. Um, so a really cool interior, something unique that you guys will see. If you look closely, you see the Recaro logo. Uh, so these came uh, with this particular trim level with the option for Recaro seats, which is pretty cool because I've got the Recaro confettis in the Supra. So that's pretty cool. Um, here we've got a couple switches that do some really cool stuff. So here we've got uh, the variable mode rear shocks. You can put them in normal mode for comfort driving or hard mode uh, if you're carrying a heavy load. And then right here you see the rear mirror, which was the contraption that I was talking about earlier. And I will show you guys how that works. All right, so a mirror drops down from that rear assembly. And what that does, it shows you where the rear of the vehicle is. This is before backup cameras and it comes in really handy again with fitting in those tight spaces in Okinawa. Now, I'm sure you guys are wondering why having this surf is bittersweet. And the reason is because our time with the surf has come to an end as we're getting ready to return to the States. We had to sell the vehicle because we can't import it with us. It's not 25 years old being a 1996. So we're unable to import it into the US. So we had to sell it back to the local market. We sold it to another military member and although it's sad that we have to let it go, we still had a great experience with it. Uh, it's been a positive financial experience for us as well. Made a little bit of money on it after cleaning a few things up. So overall, you know, I'm going to call it a win-win, but it's definitely a, a kind of sad too that we have to break this dynamic duo of the Surf and the Supra apart. That about wraps it up for the video. Like I said, big things coming for the Supra as far as importing to the United States. If you guys are excited about that or if you've enjoyed the content so far, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you can get the future content. If you've enjoyed this particular video, hit the like button. And no matter what, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and uh, we'll see you in the next video.